We like to call Lake Sturgeon our legacy fish because it's an opportunity for our work to uh, go on past many of our careers. So I think we really feel like that we're adding something to the future generations. Minnesota's waters are home to an abundance of native fish. In fact, scientists believe that over 200 million years ago, the country's oldest and largest freshwater fish found refuge here, the lake sturgeon. They're just a very neat fish, and knowing that they're like a prehistoric uh, fish, it's, it's, I don't know, just exciting. They, they look different, they're charismatic, you know, they're a bottom feeder and they get really big. I, I don't know, there's just something about them that um, just draws an interest in comparison to some of the other species that are out there. The prehistoric fish is famous for its incredibly large size and long lifespan. With the ability to grow up to seven feet long and live to 150 years old, the sturgeon stands out among the rest. But its journey has been anything but smooth. At one point, people nearly drove the fish into extinction in Minnesota, mainly due to human impact. Because of this, sturgeon stopped spawning in certain areas for almost 100 years. Minnesota's Red River Basin was one place where the sturgeon almost never returned. Until recently. On a Thursday in May, an employee for the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources took a trip to the Otter Tail River, where sturgeons had been routinely stocked for years. When they arrived, they stumbled upon something many never get a chance to witness. Sturgeons in the dozens spawning naturally. This is a story of how an almost extinct fish returned to the state of water. Luis Malden has worked with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to protect sturgeon habitats in the Midwest for over 14 years. She was one of the first to get the exciting news. Minnesota DNR contacted me by email to let me know that they had seen some congregating uh, lake sturgeon at a specific site on the otter tail and they, they took pictures and video and then about a week later it kind of came out. But how did the lake sturgeon nearly vanish from Minnesota's waters? During the 1800s, people considered sturgeon a nuisance fish as they easily broke through commercial fishing nets. People then deliberately removed the fish from the rivers and lakes and made piles along the shorelines. Later, steamboats used lake sturgeon as fuel due to the meat's high oil content. Then in the early 1900s, people started consuming sturgeon eggs as a caviar delicacy, leading them to be harvested by the thousands. During this time, the sturgeon's habitat also began to crumble. So lake sturgeon, they were extir extirpated um, in the system back in the mid-1900s, and that was due to overharvest, water pollution, and dam construction. Historically, lake sturgeon have been found throughout the Mississippi River and its tributaries, including all of the Great Lakes and the Red River, from Minnesota to Hudson Bay. Today, 19 of the 20 states where lake sturgeon were found have listed them as a threatened, endangered, or species of special concern. But then, in 1997, an important group formed an alliance. Disheartened by the failing state of the species, several government agencies and tribal nations created a lake sturgeon recovery program. The group's goal was to conserve what was left of the fish population while helping them become self-sustaining once again. To do this, the partners set their focus on restoring the sturgeon's native habitats, including the Otter Tail River. The sturgeon's recovery begins at the Canadian border, where the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service enlists the help of local indigenous communities alongside conservationists, including Doug Aloisi, a lead biologist who has studied migratory fish for more than 36 years. Together, the group works to net adult lake sturgeon from the Rainy River and transport the fish to a local hatchery where they'll spawn. During this process, females, accompanied by two males, lay hundreds of thousands of eggs over the span of one or two days. 
Once females lay the eggs, crews collect them and transport them from northern Minnesota to western Wisconsin. Here, they'll hatch within days and grow with the help of a special team at the Genoa National Fish Hatchery. We are standing kind of by the uh, upper Mississippi River right now. It uh, started out as a, uh, a hatchery that raised fish for area waters, panfish and bass, um, but we've slowly evolved into a, a hatchery that restores and recovers threatened and endangered species. During the sturgeon's time in Genoa, experts in aquatic biology will care for them. Staff at their facilities work to ensure they're receiving plenty of nutrition and clean water so they can mature into a fish fit to survive in the outside world. This one is probably a couple years old, two or three years old. The teams in Genoa will raise the fish until they grow about six to eight inches long. The sturgeon have now reached what we call the late fingerling stage and soon will be ready to return to the rivers. When the fish are ready, the Genoa team reunites with their partners where folks like Louise have been hard at work restoring habitats for them to thrive in. For a migratory fish, barriers such as dams pose one of the largest threats to a sturgeon's ability to survive. Sturgeon have a homing instinct similar to salmon. They travel back to the place where they were born for spawning season. This instinct is so strong that scientists have found tagged sturgeon migrating more than 300 miles throughout continuous bodies of water. That's about the distance from Minneapolis to Green Bay. Another hurdle for the species is finding and maintaining clean water and appropriate egg habitats for future generations. Along with continued habitat restoration and dam removals, experts say legislation such as the Clean Water Act has helped aid the group's efforts and shown success in improving the state's overall water quality. Once the group has determined a location that's suitable for the fish, they finally move them to their new home. But the work doesn't end there. Now that the fingerlings are able to survive in the improved waterways, the next task is creating an environment where they can lay their own eggs and continue to reproduce without the help of humans. And that's no small feat. Megan Bradley is a key player in the success of the Genoa hatchery. Although she's recognized as the expert on mussels, she knows all too well the stress of an ever-changing ecosystem. Sturgeon are long-lived, and so rivers have been changing for a long time. And there's, a, there's hope around the fact that they've persisted this long, but um, on a river as large as the Mississippi or uh, many of its large tributaries, the rivers will continue to change in response to those changes for maybe another thousand years. So like the fear continues that uh, there will be a change that we can't manage or that despite early signs of recruitment, maybe we won't see more successful spawning. There's the fear that some new chemical, uh, some new pollutant that we don't recognize as a risk is developed and is applied and we see losses. People from the DNR and U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services routinely monitor the adult sturgeon in the new environments. They keep track of the fish by tagging them and measuring their growth over time. Throughout this process, the groups welcome help from volunteers, collegiate programs, and community partners to complete important ecological projects. But there's still work to be done by you at home. There are easy things that we can do as Minnesota residents to help the sturgeons return. Picking up your trash, um, your home or in a park, be good stewards of the land. You know, try and leave things in better shape than what you found it. Minnesota's lake sturgeon have proved they're much more than fish from the past. The species has grown into a symbol of resilience. A fish once seen as a liability and stacked like logs along the Mississippi is now celebrated for its prehistoric journey. And maybe more importantly, the freshwater sturgeon is a reminder that together, we can still fix what we damaged so long ago. So sturgeon represent the persistence of aquatic habitats over not just the hundred years that an individual might live, but the, the, the thousands. 
millions of years that sturgeon have been found in rivers in this part of North America. As long as we're finding sturgeon, there's, there's a sense of hope for the river that no matter um, what loss or change happens, that we have the potential to either recover or have the river persist. And now, because of the persistence of volunteers and scientists, the lake sturgeon story in the Midwest isn't ending anytime soon.